everyone. This is Patty Sandstrom. I am a University of Minnesota Extension Master Gardener with Sherburn County. And this is a presentation on Get Growing, a beginner's guide to growing vegetables. This is just a quick slide about the program mission. Uh, the U of M Extension Master Gardener program uses research-based horticultural knowledge and practices to deliver educational outreach and project-based efforts to inspire, change, and promote healthy people, communities, and a healthy planet. There are seven different priorities of the Master Gardener program. Um, I won't go into each of these, but you can see them on the screen. Um, today, we'll be focusing on food and food production and how you can grow your own garden at home. You can grow vegetables in many different places, no matter your level of gardening experience. Uh, in this presentation, we'll go over several considerations to get growing vegetables wherever you are. First, we'll cover what site conditions help vegetables grow best. Next, we'll talk about what is good to grow as a beginner and how to pick healthy plants. We'll discuss how to get the plants going and what to do to keep them alive. And finally, we'll talk about the best part, when to harvest your vegetables. Plants have three main needs to consider when choosing a garden location. Plenty of sun, nutrient-rich soil, and access to water. Without one of those basic needs, your plants won't be able to grow. So keep those considerations in mind when choosing uh, where you will put your garden space. It doesn't matter if you grow your plants in raised beds, containers, or in your backyard. They will need at least six to eight hours of sunlight a day, and the more light, the better. So when choosing a garden location, pay attention to where shadows are cast. Think of fences, buildings, and trees that can cast shadows that decrease the amount of sunlight your garden gets. And when possible, it's best to orient your garden towards the south, where you're most likely likely to get the most sun throughout the day. If you don't have a perfect bright sunny spot, do the best with what you have. Let's say you have a shady forest-like backyard. Chances are you will have a difficult time growing vegetables there, but try a few containers in the front yard where there's less shade perhaps. Be creative with your space. The soil that you plant your vegetables into matters quite a bit. Vegetables prefer well-draining, nutrient-rich soil. How can you find out if this is the type of soil you have? Well, get a soil test. Soil tests are a great way to learn more about the soil that you have to work with and what kind of fertilizer treatment your plants will need. It's important to follow the soil test recommendations to avoid adverse environmental effects from fertilizer overuse. In addition to unnecessarily wasting resources, and don't be afraid to garden if you don't have the perfect soil. Most gardens can improve their soil quality over time with the regular incorporation of compost. Adding compost is a great way to maintain a healthy soil. And if you want to make things easier, raised beds are a great option to reduce soil compaction and to start with a fresh slate. You can also grow vegetables in containers with soilless media if you don't have soil or space for raised gardens and beds. To do a soil test, collect up to two cups of soil from around your garden and send your sample to the Uni University of Minnesota Soil Laboratory, which will provide information on your current soil and recommendations for fertilization moving forward. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of your local Master Gardener volunteers for help in interpreting the soil test results when you get those back. Your vegetables will need regular watering no matter where you grow them. So make sure that you have easy access to water throughout the season. Furthermore, make sure the water is portable and safe for fresh drinking. Well water should always be tested and water from rain barrels should be used for flower gardens instead of vegetables. This will make sure that your vegetables remain safe for fresh eating. How do you know when to water? While most gardens will need up to one inch of water a week, it's hard to know what this means. You can stick a can next to your plant to gauge rainfall or do the finger task, which is stick your finger into the soil to at least your second knuckle. If your finger is dry, then water. 
Keep in mind that plants prefer deep, infrequent watering compared to frequent light watering. And finally, when you're able, it is best to water a plant at the base instead of the leaves and the fruits. Wet leaves can increase the likelihood of disease, so avoid this when able. Next, we'll talk about good varieties to grow here in Minnesota. Um, when you're trying to determine what type of vegetables you're going to grow, choose varieties that you're interested in eating or testing out. Um, if you know that you don't like cabbage, then I wouldn't encourage growing cabbage in your garden. Think about what things that you like to eat fresh and cook with, and those would be the things I would recommend. It's also fun to try new vegetables or things that you can't um, usually buy in your local grocery store. When you're picking vegetables, choose vegetables with a days to harvest under 150 days. Um, we have a short, fairly short growing season here in Minnesota, so you'll want to make sure that um, you're choosing varieties that have enough time during our warm months to grow and harvest. Summer loving plants thrive in the heat of the season. Consider growing things like green beans, peppers, tomatoes, Swiss chard, cucumbers, pumpkins, and other summer annuals. Um, some of my favorite warm season crops um, include green beans. I like to plant the bush varieties of green beans. Um, and I also plant many different kinds of tomatoes, um, up to about 10 different varieties in my garden. Um, I also plant um, different varieties of cucumbers. Um, and I do a lot of uh, pickling in the summer with the cucumbers from my garden. Spring and fall loving plants thrive in the cooler weather. And often these types will become bitter or try to flower when things warm up and get too hot. Um, consider growing things like peas, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, radishes, and others either in the early spring or in the late summer for a fall harvest. Um, we are in about mid-May right now, so it, there's still time to grow um, some of these items for a spring harvest. If you have an idea of what you'd like to grow, the next step is finding these plants. For gardeners just starting out, there will be a greater success if you purchase transplants and seeds. In general, if it's a summer loving plant, you want to start it as a transplant. That would be things um, for sure like tomatoes and peppers. Transplants that have been started as seeds indoors uh, before you can plant outside. These transplants, or also called seedlings, are time to be ready for the garden when the last frost date has occurred. Having seedlings extends the growing season of the plant in our short Minnesota summers. Because with transplants, there's more time for the vegetables to grow once they're planted in soil, and they'll develop fruit earlier within the season. You can start your own seedlings, but it's, um, for a beginner gardener, it's easier to purchase transplants when you're first starting out. When selecting transplants, look for deep green, healthy looking plants. Avoid plants that have signs of disease or damage, in addition to blooms, which indicate stress in the young plants. You also want to avoid picking the biggest plants, as they may have a harder time transplanting or be more stressed from growing in small containers. You can purchase plants from a number of different sources, such as uh, local plant sales, um, nurseries, or even from big box stores. Spring and fall loving plants like lettuce and peas, quick growers like radishes and spinach, and root plants such as carrots and turnips are best to grow from seed. These plants do best when started directly in the garden as seeds versus transplants. Often seed catalogs and packages will give you important information such as when you can plant your seeds, what the soil temperature should be, how deep to plant the seeds, and when you should expect germination to occur. Use this information to help inform your garden efforts. So how do you get your garden started? 
The next section will cover how to plant your new garden and what to do to help your plants get off to a great start. In general, you can get your garden started after the last chance of frost has passed, which here in central Minnesota is around May 15th. Spring and fall loving plants can usually be planted earlier as soon as the soil is workable, but check your seed packets to know for sure when you can plant. In general, seed packets and plant information will tell you when you can plant based off of your last frost date. When you can plant will depend on where you live, but in general, it's safe to start growing for sure after Memorial Day. While this may seem late in the season, it's important to protect summer loving plants against low nighttime temperatures. And the closer you get to June, the lower the chances that we have a late spring frost that may kill the plants. When you're ready to get working in the garden, plant transplants either early in the morning or on shady days to avoid shocking the transplants with heat and sun. Seed packets provide information on how to plant your seeds so always refer to the packet for more information. Important considerations to keep in mind are seed depth and distance from one another. When planting seeds, it's easy to forget how big the seeds will be when those are full grown plants. So make sure to properly space the seeds so that, you can, that each plant will have enough space to grow. If you're working with very small seeds that you cannot see well, things like carrots or lettuce, you may have to thin the seedlings later by removing extra plants that are too close to one another. It's best to thin when the seedlings are a few inches tall. In addition to proper spacing, be careful with depth when planting seeds. In general, you can plant seeds about four times deep as the seeds are wide. To visualize this, imagine you could fit three additional seeds on top of the planted seed in order to reach the surface of the soil. Be careful when watering so seeds are not washing away. In addition, if you have regular problems with rodents or birds, you can cover a freshly planted seed bed with bird netting to prevent the animals from eating your new garden. Most seeds, especially when planted at this time of the year, should germinate within two or three weeks but always check the seed packet to know exactly when you should be seeing your seeds sprout. If you do start your seeds indoors to create seedlings or transplants, it's a good idea to harden those transplants off before you plant them in the ground. Usually if you buy plants um, from a nursery or a box store, they, they have done this process already as most of the time you'll see that these plants are outside or in a greenhouse area. Uh, but if you're starting them yourself, um, because most transplants are grown indoors where the climate is perfect, the real life conditions of sun, wind, and soil may be too much for brand new transplants to handle well. So to harden off transplants, you should slowly expose your plants to outdoor conditions about two weeks prior to planting. Start with a shady area for a few hours and every day slowly increase the time frame and the amount of sun your plants receive. If you're unable to move your plants outdoors often, then improvise by using a fan on your plants and expose them to increasing amounts of sun. Once you're ready to plant, make sure the transplants have been watered prior to planting. Plan out your garden space so that the plants won't be too close together when they reach full size. Dig a hole that will fit the root ball of the plant and carefully remove the plant from the container. Make sure to not handle the transplant harshly at the stem. Plant in the hole, making sure not to leave any of the potting medium exposed to the surface as this can quickly wick away moisture from the plant. You'll want to make sure you also don't plant too deeply as this can cause, root, cause rot along the stem. Carefully press the soil around the transplant down to make sure that the root ball is connected to the native soil and then thoroughly water in the newly transplanted vegetables. Once you've got your plants in the ground and they're growing well, like this uh, Brussels sprout plant on the slide here, 
How do you keep your garden healthy and thriving? This last section will go over some considerations to make when taking care of your garden throughout the season. Weeds, weeds, weeds. Weeds can be one of the most frustrating problems of your vegetable garden. As soon as your plants are ready to grow, so do the weeds. Weed seed may be in your soil or fly in the wind. There never seems to be an end of the potential of weeds. And while it may be tempting to let the weeds battle it out with your plants, keep in mind that those weeds are competing for the nutrients and water that your vegetables need. So by removing the weeds, you ensure that the vegetable plants have enough space to grow and can utilize all the nutrients and water in the soil. One of the better ways to win the battle against weeds is to prevent weed seedlings from sprouting by using mulch. You can use many different kinds of mulch for this purpose. Um, various things such as um, grass clippings, leaves, um, wood mulch. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different options you can use for mulching. When weeds have taken hold as they have in the picture on the screen, it's best to control them early when they're easier to pull out. When possible, remove weeds before they can set seed and remove as much of the root as possible. There are many tools out there to help with weed removal which along with pulling by hand can effectively work against most weeds you'll encounter in your garden. The plants you grow use a lot of nutrients from the soil and you're likely to have to apply fertilizer throughout the growing season to keep your plants growing. Compost is best added before the plants begin to grow, though sometimes you can mix compost into the soil during the season without disturbing the roots. You can also use a water soluble fertilizer for a quick fix during the season when the plants are growing or other inorganic options that can provide nutrients to your growing plants. It's hard to know when your plants need food by just looking at them, but in general you may notice leaves yellowing, slowed growth, or other symptoms of nutrient deficiency. Avoid nutrient issues in your garden by applying compost before you get started and regularly using fertilizer throughout the season according to your soil test results. If you take a close look in your vegetable garden, you're likely to notice some type of various bugs and diseases on your plants. While some pests and diseases can kill off your plants, know that not all bugs are bad and not all sprouts are going to kill your plants. In fact, many of the vegetables you grow will look different than those you find in the grocery store. But don't fear, they'll taste just as good, if not better. Some holes and bumps are to be expected in the home garden. However, to avoid pests from eating all of your harvest, check your plants early and often for signs of any pests or diseases, such as holes in leaves, insect poop, or spots that keep spreading throughout the plants. Once you've found any issues, you can contact your local Master Gardener volunteer program to get information on what pests you're dealing with and what can be done to remedy the problem. It's important to know what you're dealing with to know how best to combat the issue. Sometimes plants die, pests take over, diseases become unstoppable, or things don't just work the way we thought they would. And this happens to everyone, even the experts. So during the season, take note of what worked, what didn't work, and make changes the following years. You can always talk to your local master gardeners to learn what went wrong and just continue to learn by growing in your garden. We all start out somewhere and gardening is no exception. There's always things that you learn every year. And finally, Make sure to enjoy the products of all that hard work by enjoying the harvest. This last section will help you know when your veggies will be ready and what you can do with them. The best part about having a vegetable garden is enjoying what you've grown. If you've kept your seed packets or plant tag information, you should have a good idea of when your plants will be ready to harvest following the days to harvest estimation from when you planted. Harvest leafy greens when they taste good and summer loving vegetables like tomatoes and peppers when they fully developed. Winter squash is ready at the end of the season, while things like zucchini, pictured on the right, will keep growing and growing unless you pick it early. Some vegetables, like potatoes and carrots, 
can be more difficult to tell when they're ready since they're root vegetables grown under the ground. Some root crops will start to pop up from the soil, while potatoes stay underground until you harvest them. Seed crops such as peas and beans can be harvested for fresh eating or they can be left on the vine to dry out for seed crops. There's a lot of different ways to harvest your plants, so try it out and see what tastes good to you. And finally, it's important to follow best practices for food safety to make sure that your produce doesn't cause any foodborne illness. While many considerations come into play, it's important to follow basic hygiene. Wash your hands before you harvest vegetables, wash any produce before you consume it, and make sure that no animals have used your garden space to relieve themselves. Most foodborne illness happens when people, animals, and contaminated water happen. So being smart will make sure your produce is healthy and delicious. There are many ways to store vegetables as well, but the best way to enjoy vegetables is fresh. I like to use a lot of my vegetables in salads or fresh recipes. Like I said earlier, I also grow many different types of tomatoes, so I can tomatoes um, in salsa and spaghetti sauce, and I also make a lot of fresh salsa with the tomatoes and peppers from my garden. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this presentation about how to start a vegetable garden, and now I'll take you on a short tour of my own gardens.